Hey guys, Mr. Fine here, uh, discussing rocks and the rock cycle. That's chapter four, lesson one in your textbook, page 110. So let's go ahead and let's get started with this. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Question number one, uh, how are rocks classified? And number two, what is the rock cycle? Uh, this lesson, we're gonna briefly talk about the way rocks are classified in the two ways. We're going to talk about the three types of rocks that we'll go into detail with the other lessons in this chapter. And then we're going to spend the bulk of this video talking about the right rock cycle, rather, making sure you understand it. So let's get going. Okay, rocks. Now, if you lived anywhere but in South Louisiana, like where we are, rocks would be everywhere. We would see rocks all over the place. You'd dig it in the ground. Rocks would come up. Where we're at, on the other hand, we pretty much have nothing but sediment and soil. And in most places, unless we find a salt dome, uh, you won't find rocks for up to 100 feet below the surface. So this is kind of out of our area of understanding, but let's get into it otherwise. It, you, know, you know, if we go up further into North Louisiana, they'll have soil like that. But anyway, a rock, a rock is a natural solid mixture of minerals or particles. If you remember from our last chapter on min minerals, rather, a group of molecules of the same types of molecules come together to form crystals, which come together to form minerals. Groups of minerals come together to form a rock. Now, grains are, is the term that we use uh, to describe the fragments that make up rocks. Essentially, grains of rocks are tiny little pieces of minerals. Okay, And like minerals, we can classify rocks in many different fashions. Uh, a rock can be classified according to its size, its shape, and its chemical composition of its grains. Now what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about two main ways that we classify rocks here. The first off is a geologist will classify rocks according to their composition and their texture. Okay, composition and texture, these are two ways geologists classify rocks and these are pretty important. Uh, first off, the size of the grains in a rock and the way the grains fit together are what we call the texture of the rock, which we'll look at in a second. And texture can also be used to determine the environment in which a rock is formed. If we were to go right here, okay? Grains, like I said, are the individual fragments that make up a rock. And if we were to look at this conglomerate rock right here, and let's look at the individual grains as we slide, as we see, Within the rock at a microscopic level, there are these are individual minerals we see right here. These individual minerals, crystals come together to form grains. These individual fragments are put together, and that's what we call rock. Okay? And as you can see as I slide this across, that's the individual grains. Okay. So grains are the individual fragments that make up rocks. And the size of them has to do with the texture. The larger the grains, the more coarse the texture is. The smoother the texture, the smaller the grains. Okay, texture can also be used to determine the environment in which a rock was formed. For example, if there were large, heavy forces, big forces at work, the texture will be smaller because of erosion and things of that nature. Whereas a uh, smaller, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the smaller the texture, you have bigger forces at work grinding down these minerals to be a lot smaller. But if they're bigger, there might not be as many big forces at work. Okay. Uh, the other way uh, that we classify rocks is based on the material that makes up the rock. That's what we call the rock's composition. Okay. What it's composed of. The composition of a rock can be determined, used to determine where the rock was formed. Okay. We can figure out if it's sedimentary, igneous, or metamorphic based on this. And not only that, just like texture. Composition can also determine the conditions that existed when the rock was formed. So texture, the size and feel of the grains, that's one way that we uh, determine what type of rock is which. And the other one is the composition, the actual material that it's made up of. So let's go on to, let's look at the composition of this mineral. Okay, this is granite from Yosemite National Park in California. Okay, this it come granite's an igneous rock that made of mica, feldspar, and quartz. The black is the mica. Uh, the light color is the feldspar, and this clear-looking stuff is the quartz. The 
course just kind of sits there. It's kind of clear. You can see that. And you can see the feldspar mix in there. And the micas mix in there. It kind of looks like, if you will, chocolate uh, cookies and cream uh, ice cream based on that. But, of course, uh, granite has lots of different colors and textures and compositions to it, which we'll get into when we talk about igneous rocks. So as you look at this picture, you can think to yourself, okay, what were the forces at work? This is really zoomed in, which means the minerals are pretty small. So what does that tell you about the forces that help make up this piece of granite? You can go ahead and think about that, and that'll help you understand the forces that work when we get into the rock cycle in a second. Okay, now, this is just a brief overview of the three major rock types. Uh, the next three lessons in the chapter will review igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rock. So we're going to go way into detail, more into detail about these, but let's get going with this otherwise. First off, the first type is igneous rock. Igneous rock forms when magma or lava cools and crystallizes. Okay, And of course, you remember from the last chapter on minerals that molten or liquid rock below Earth's surface is what we call magma. And when the molten rock gets on the Earth's surface, we call that lava. Okay. And, of course, this comes from volcanoes, calderas, things like that, which we'll talk about later in this school year. So the granite that you saw in the previous slide uh, was an igneous rock. Okay, So igneous, made from magma and lava. Okay, The next type is sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks will form where sediment is deposited. Sediment is broken down uh, pieces of rocks. Um, when mixed with organic material, we call it soil. And but for our purposes, we can essentially call sediment dirt for our for our class. So essentially, sedimentary rocks are rocks that are made of dirt. Okay, forces such as wind, running water, ice, and even gravity itself can cause rocks to break down. Uh, and sediment rock is, is material that forms when rocks are broken down into smaller pieces or dissolve in water as rocks erode. So these forces, wind, running water, ice, gravity, chemical processes that break down these uh, rocks into small little bits, that's all what we call erosion that we'll talk about later in the school year. So essentially, sedimentary rocks are made of old rocks that are compressed together after they've been broken down in the dirt. Now, sediment can be transported to new environments where they are deposited and form sedimentary rock. So we call deposition. Whenever we talk about erosion and deposition, we'll go into detail. But essentially, no, the sedimentary rocks are made of worn down pieces of rock that have been worn all the way down in the sediment, and they're broken down and they're transported and put together to form sedimentary rock. Uh, the picture that you see at the bottom of these slides are pictures of sedimentary rock. Okay, So how does igneous rock, to go back to it, let's see how igneous rock forms. Okay, So we have a field. And this is essentially, this is commonly how igneous rock will form on the Earth's surface, which we'll talk about extrusive and intrusive igneous rocks later on in this chapter. But essentially, you'll have a volcanic eruption. This magma, okay, will cool and crystallize, and it'll form and it'll grow. These crystals will form and grow as the lava moves across the ground. And from there, after the crystals lock into place, they form grains. And they form rock like this basalt sample that you see right here. Uh, this basalt sample, if you look at the lines, it's actually the flow of lava. And so if we re go reverse time, we'll have a volcanic eruption. The lava will flow across the ground just like you see. And the lava will cool down. And it'll show the motion. And it'll form the igneous rock. Okay. And so sedimentary rock, of course, works on... If there was a rock here, it would erode down, get carried by water, put in a place the water would dry, it would congeal and cement down and go from there. But we'll talk about that more later. Now, finally, third type of rock. When rocks are exposed to extreme temperatures and pressure or the addition of chemical fluids, metamorphic rocks result. If you remember last year from Earth science, metamorphosis. There's incomplete and complete metamorphosis. Okay, for metamorphic rocks, this is a complete metamorphosis. The most common type of metamorphic rock we'll think of is actually marble, which was granite before it was converted. Now, the mineral in metamorphic rocks, the minerals that make up the rock's composition can change as well as the texture or arrangement of the individual grains. Uh, marble's far smoother than granite is if you look at the actual texture of itself. 
In many cases, the change is so intense that the arrangement of grains appear as bent or even twisted layers. If we were to look at a piece of marble, you'd be able to see that. Okay, if you've ever been to Marble Slab Creamery or if you've uh, been to someone's house that has a marble countertop, you see the twisting and turning and ribbon-like layers. That's the intense heat and pressure that converted and changed the grains themselves. Okay, and metamorphic rocks can form from igneous sedimentary or even other metamorphic rocks. In other words, if put under enough heat and pressure, any type of rock can undergo metamorphosis and change to a different type of rock. Now, the series of processes, this is really important, series of processes that change one type of rock into another type of rock is what we call the rock cycle. This is really important. You'll see it on your upcoming tests on this chapter. You'll probably see it on the six-week assessment. You'll probably see it on the leak test. This is one of the big ideas in uh, geology that you need to understand. So I'm going to take some time talking about it uh, through some diagrams that you're going to have handouts of and you can look at it that way you can understand it. So, but finally, rocks in action. Okay, in order for the rock cycle to take place, rocks have to move, essentially. Some processes of the rock cycle, they may only occur beneath the Earth's surface, okay, such as those associated with extreme temperature, pressure, and melting. Okay, the temperatures needed to melt rock down, you can't really find it on Earth's surface. I mean, even during the summertime around here, it's around 90 degrees. Temperature, we're talking like 1,000 degrees Celsius, things like that, really, really hot temperature and extreme pressures pushing down on that. Okay, now, however, rocks from below the Earth's surface, which we'll talk about the mantle and the lithosphere and the stenosphere in a, a week or so, okay, these rocks down here end up getting pushed up to the surface where things like erosion and deposition can take place through a process of what we call uplifting. Uplifting is a tectonic process that forces rocks onto Earth's surface. Uh, once we're done with this unit, we'll talk about plate tectonics and talk about how the Earth, rocks on Earth move. And so this is kind of an introduction to it. Essentially uplift, uplift, okay, lifting up from below the Earth's surface, going up to the surface. It's the process that rocks below the surface will get pushed up. So let's go ahead and let's look at the rock cycle. Okay, oh my God, giant diagram with lots of arrows going all over the place. This looks really confusing. Okay, in a way it is, but what I did is on each of these slides that we'll go over, you'll actually see the rock cycle for each particular type of rock. Okay, the different types of rocks are in black boxes. Okay, the periwinkle, purplish boxes are forces uh, that act upon the rocks. Sediment itself is dirt, or magma, or lava, or molten rock itself is in orange. Okay. So these, this is all the forces that form the three types of rocks, and they're all connected. This is important to realize that these forces on Earth operate on all rocks, no matter what type, sedimentary, igneous, or metamorphic. So let's first, let's look at sedimentary rock. Let's look at the sedimentary rock cycle. It's actually a small part of the cycle. You start off with dirt or sediment, okay? Uh, it gets compressed and cemented like concrete. Concrete is essentially a really fast-paced process by which sedimentary rock can form. The chemical cement is mixed with water along with sand and uh, rock, and the water is removed, it dries, and it forms a hard rock-like substance. Essentially, sedimentary rocks work under the same way. The dirt is compressed, it's laid down, it's soaked up with water, it's put under pressure, it's cemented, and sedimentary rock forms. It can either be on the surface or it can be below ground. Uh, sediment can land on top of it and push down. When we talk about the geologic age of the Earth, we'll talk about sedimentary layers. But essentially, tectonic forces uh, and other forces will push sedimentary rock up to the surface. Once it gets to the surface, weathering and erosion, that's the water, the wind, the rain, gravity, breaks down these sedimentary rocks into little tiny grains that what we call sediment and dirt, and then the cycle begins anew. So that's how sedimentary rock is formed. Okay, Igneous rock works a little bit different. First off, igneous rock will start with the magma, which is below the Earth's surface, or lava once it's above the surface. Uh, because the magma and lava is so hot, the rock crystals and stuff are all floating around in essentially a liquid form. If you remember from physical science, uh, a liquid, the individual atoms move faster than they would in a solid, and the bonds are a lot 
a lot looser in a liquid than they would be in a solid. So once the magma or the lava moves to away from the heat source, it starts cooling down. These individual molecules will lock into place to form crystals. These crystals will grow, okay? And once they grow to a certain size, uh, they'll, be, they'll cool down to the ambient or normal temperature, and they'll be locked into place as igneous rocks. Okay, if it's lava, it's been put on Earth's surface, it'll immediately put under the effects of weathering and erosion. But if it's magma, uplift will take place, okay? Tectonic forces will push this rock from under the ground to the surface, and then from there, the weathering erosion, the water, the wind, the rain, the sand, all that stuff, breaks down the igneous rock into little pieces of sediment. Okay, from there, igneous rock could become sedimentary rock, or it can get pushed down and remelted into magma, or something else can happen with regards to metamorphic rocks. Okay, so let's actually look at the process of metamorphic rocks. Here's the thing to know. Igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and even other metamorphic rocks can form metamorphic rock. So that's why you see this with metamorphic rock all in the middle. For example, for both igneous and sedimentary rocks, they can be pushed down below the surface, okay, put under high temperature and high pressure. It changes the grain, it changes the texture, can even change in some ways the composition and forms metamorphic rock. The metamorphic rock lays dormant below the ground. It's pushed up via uplift, okay? It's pushed up via uplift. It gets to the surface, weathering erosion take place and it breaks down the sediment. Or some metamorphic rocks will actually be pushed further down into a hot spot and they'll go ahead and melt down. Okay, so to sum up, when you look at it, see as you can see the whole cycle is all connected and individual pieces of it, here's a piece of sedimentary, here's a piece of igneous rock, and here's a piece of metamorphic rock cycle. And they all come together to work out and create the rock cycle. So. This lesson is just about done. It's a little bit longer than your normal one, but let's, by the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer these questions. First off, how are rocks classified? Well, rocks are classified by their composition, which is the mineral makeup of the rock themselves, and their texture, or the way grains of minerals fit the rock. The other question you were able to answer while going over this lesson is what is the rock cycle? The rock cycle is a series of processes, erosion, melting, pressure, all those things you saw in that light purple boxes in the diagram that change from one type of rock to another type of rock. In other words, how sedimentary rock is formed, how igneous rocks are formed, how metamorphic rocks are formed, how sedimentary and igneous rocks break down, and all that. It can be a little confusing, but if you pay attention and study closely the charts for each of them individually and then understand that they work together, you won't have any problems with that. Okay. Uh, the copies of this notes are on Blackboard, as is your homework, worksheets, anything like that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Talk to you later.